Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now riding shotgun with me on the way home today was this GTX 470 from the local CEX. Most models I've seen do have a blower style or single fan design, though I was hoping that perhaps we'd get lucky with a pallet dual fan or gigabyte triple fan addition. I ordered this online to collect in store so there was no exact picture of the item as is usually the case with CEX. I like the element of surprise really, and I am a fan of this style of card, though it's not ideal for this warm old beast. The 470 along with its more exciting bigger brother, the 480, were the first Nvidia cards that came to market with DX11 support. This was back in March 2010. Speaking of support, the last game ready driver was released back in March 2018. I wanted to test one of these back in July but I had a bad feeling about combining a 90 degree graphics card with a 40 degree summer's day. As things start to cool off, well, it's time to let this thing loose on some of my games. I say some because compatibility is likely going to be an issue. So here we are in the Witcher 3 first of all, and the GTX 470 with its 1.28GB of GDDR5 is definitely better suited to 720p resolution, perhaps 900p in some titles. Now you can get away with 1080p as well in some areas of certain games, but you'll find that lower resolutions definitely help out, because when you get to those busy areas like we're about to in a minute in the city here, the frame rate will drop. So Choosing a lower resolution from the start means that you're less likely to see significant dips in performance. Here, the 470 can handle the game with about 40 to 50 FPS, sometimes higher. And as you can probably tell, the temperature already is at 87 degrees. This is certainly a warm card, and I'm using it on an open test bench. So, yeah, imagine if this was in a case how warm we'd be getting. I've read that these are fine up to 100 degrees, you don't really need to worry, Fermi just ran hot and still does of course, so there's no need to panic here, but it might be higher than what you're used to seeing with more modern cards in terms of temperatures. I wonder if we can get this thing to hit 90, I guess we'll find out. So you may be wondering whether or not the 470 can actually run newer games, and in some cases yes, if they don't require DX11.1 or DX12. For example, Stray here runs with at least 40 to 50 FPS at 720p with the lowest settings, and it still looks pretty good, to be honest. There was no issue starting the game, in fact it fired up straight away, and as you can see the performance is pretty solid at the moment. We're hitting at least 60 FPS. If we just jump through the window of this apartment here, oh, nope, I thought I could get through there. Maybe there's a button I'm missing, I don't know. But it seems to be doing okay. The VRAM is of course almost maxing out, which is to be expected with this old card. And now, oh, what's happening? Oh, we're actually getting a little bit of slowdown. <laughs> Oh no, I think we can actually pinpoint the moment where the VRAM just hit its maximum there. I think the card's just sort of given up. Please don't be dying. The performance has just dropped from around 50 FPS to 30, so yeah, not ideal, but let's move on to our next game. Not sure what happened there, but let's move on quick before it dies. Now I know there are mixed opinions about Saints Row, but this is another modern game released this year, 2022, that can actually run with this old graphics card. Now yes we are running at 800 by 600 resolution and yes we have got the lowest in-game settings selected but for an old card, for a 12 year old card that's officially unsupported now to be able to do this, well I think it's quite impressive. There will be drops below 30 FPS, I was going to say 60 but the whole thing runs at less than 60. There will be drops below 30 FPS. The temperature isn't as high here as it was in The Witcher, probably because there's less strain on the GPU as a whole. I've got it paired with my Ryzen 5 3600 because it was the only CPU that it worked with. Anything on the AM4 platform did work but I couldn't get it to work with my 12th gen Intel i5, perhaps some sort of compatibility issue there. But as you can see, even as we start blasting, the frame rate isn't really dipping below 25, which is certainly impressive for an old beast like this one. If I could afford one of these back in the day, I would have certainly got it. So GTA 5, this actually ran really well. I wasn't expecting this. I did run the game at normal, which is the equivalent, of course, to the game's lowest settings. Um, 1080p here, no problems at all. 
I really could have pushed this a little bit more if I wanted to. We were seeing at least 90 FPS on occasion. I'm not sure what the average is just yet, but it will all be up on the screen, of course. I imagine it's going to be pretty solid with decent 1 and 0.1% lows. Now, with 1.28 gigabytes of GDDR5, it doesn't take long to hit that limit as you can see even with the normal settings GTA is doing just that and you'll find that the 470 is going to be hitting anywhere from 95 to 100 percent GPU usage in pretty much every title you could fire up something that's really not all that demanding well like this game here and it's it's going to be the bottleneck with any modern processor what is this guy doing let's just give him a quick grenade there we go GTA 5 runs perfectly Okay, so Red Dead Redemption didn't really give us much to work with in terms of settings. We were exceeding the VRAM limitation from within the game's menu, so we couldn't actually adjust anything. I don't think that really matters though, because we were getting about 10, 15 FPS. Yeah, this isn't playable by any stretch of the imagination, and even if we were to adjust the resolution scaling from the INI file, I don't think we'd really gain much here. This, unfortunately is not a game that runs well on the 470. Now Battlefield 5 actually runs if you change a certain value from within the system 32 configuration. I believe it's called nvapi.dll, nvapi64.dll, something like that. If you rename that file, the game will run because otherwise you get a graphics unsupported error and the game will just close again. But one little tweak will actually mean that this does work. 720p, oh, dead. 720p with the low settings and 60% resolution scaling does mean a sort of playable experience. 720p at native doesn't really work all too well, so I'd advise sticking with or adjusting the resolution scale slider for a playable experience in Battlefield 5. Yeah, again, I was quite surprised by this result to be honest even though it doesn't look like much if you do buy this card and it cost me 22 pounds if you can find one as cheap as that well it's not gonna give you the worst gaming experience in the world okay so Fortnite here is certainly playable with the performance mode I did try the low settings as well which actually ran fine but there were a few more dips especially dips below 60. The performance mode with the far view distance enabled means that we get a high frame rate that's high enough to remain competitive as well and the game doesn't look too bad for it. I'd recommend this option with any older card actually. The performance mode just lowers everything below the low in-game values and it means that older hardware has a better chance of running this game. Look at that, another wipe out there. If only they knew the hardware I was playing on. But there we go, the 470, very old card, unsupported with game ready drivers, but it can still handle a few of my favourite and hopefully your favourite games too. But that's all there is. Let me know what you think of this card down below. Let me know if you've ever used one or anything in the Fermi lineup. What a great series of cards. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.